Once you've bought a book, you can pretty much do whatever you like with it. You can keep it for as long as you want. Lend it to a friend or sell it to a stranger. You can even leave it to someone when you die. And Max leaves his entire collection of signed Peter Fitzsimons books to Peter Fitzsimon. Yeah! I love those books. Love them, love them, love them. But when you buy a book on an e-reader like a Kindle or an iPad, then things aren't so simple. That's because you're not actually buying the book, just a licence to access the book. Which isn't nearly as exciting. <laughs> Stop! You're in breach of the terms and conditions. This is worse than Quantum of Solace. And it's the same with gaming and services like Steam. You don't actually own the games you download, just a licence to play them. And gamers are furious. Oi! Huh? Well, some are. Because digital files are easy to copy, they have what's called digital rights management. DRM restricts who can access the file and on what devices. It's a bit like buying a book that you can only read on certain couches. You might think you're buying a copy of the book when all you're actually buying is a key to unlock the file. Now this generally means you can't lend, trade or resell what you've bought. Not only that, but some companies can actually cancel your access or delete your files. In 2009, some editions of George Orwell's 1984 were remotely deleted by Amazon from Kindles. Which sounds like something out of that famous Alanis Morissette song. Well, it's a time. Amazon deleted 1985 from my Kindle. In 2013, an American had all his e-books deleted when he entered Singapore. And in the same year, iTunes blocked some people's access to Disney movies they'd already paid for. Look, Simba, everything the light touches is ours within the limited terms of our license. Wow. What about that shadowy place? That's Singapore. You must never go there, Simba. Examples like this are pretty rare, but unlike when you pay for a hard copy, they can happen. Not only that, some providers state in their terms and conditions that they can change the service however they like. And if you want to keep using the licences, you have to keep agreeing to the changes in the terms and conditions. Wait, it says here I have to give up my firstborn? Which one of you was born first? Some argue we've become copyright serfs, unable to own digital content, and instead are reliant on the whims of capricious barons for access. Ow! Well, you said you wanted a tortured metaphor. But do you still have consumer rights if all you're buying is a licence? You do. The Australian consumer law yeah. still applies, just like any other good or service. Licensing has other problems, though. It ties you to the licensing company. If they go broke or stop supporting your product, there might not be much you can do. Apple and Amazon may be massive companies today, but will they be around forever? Let me show you something I bought from Amazon a long, long time ago. But Grandpa, Amazon doesn't even exist anymore. Damn it. Do you mean the company or do you mean the rainforest? Both. Damn it. In fact, Sony stopped supporting its e-reader just last year, which was terrible news for the one person who owned a Sony e-reader. This is just like the Sony Betamax player, the Sony Mini Disc player, the Sony BMG rootkit all over again. And it's not just when companies die. When you die, you can't transfer ownership of your licences. You might think you can just give them your password. He's trying to say something. What is it, Dad? Pork chop. Dad! Is it a lowercase or a capital P? Is it a capital P? But even that's against the terms and conditions. Of course, these kinds of restrictions may not bother you. Many of us treat our physical books, music and videos like they're temporary anyway. And changes in technology can have the same effect. They were all presents. But if you do want to keep unrestricted versions of legally purchased books, music, movies and TV shows for personal backups, then just ask the internet. And the answer, or a virus, is just a couple of clicks away. Apple stopped putting DRM on music, but songs bought before 2009 may still be locked to iTunes. What a shame. 
Now you can delete all those old songs and download new DRM free versions of them at no cost. But that's a lot of hassle. Hoff. Or you can get software that does it for you, whether it's for music, ebooks, or video files. Then you too can enjoy your digital content forever and leave it to anyone you like. And Jenny leaves her Fifty Shades of Grey collection to her sister Shirley. Oh! Hey, have you read my book on Batavia? It's the best story in the history of the world. 